All right then gang, so now we have the bare bones of our store set up and now we actually need to start doing things like signing a user up, logging them in and logging them out and all that jazz. And when those things happen, we'll mutate our state to update the user. So if they sign up or log in, the state value becomes the current user logged in. And then if they log out, it becomes null again. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to start working with Firebase Auth and making requests to the Firebase backend so that it can authenticate signing requests, login requests, or handle logout requests on the backend. So where would we write all of this code to perform those asynchronous requests to the Firebase backend? Well, I'd like to keep all of our authentication logic within this store file inside the store. So then it's all in one central place. But where in this store would we create it? Would we create a mutation for each request and write code in there? For example, would we make a login mutation and then put our asynchronous Firebase login request code inside that? And then when we get a response, we could update the store. Well, no, we can't do that. We cannot use any asynchronous code inside a mutation. They must be synchronous. So any data fetching or authentication requests or anything else that's asynchronous, we cannot put inside a mutation. Instead, Vuex gives us something called actions to do all of this in. So we can make a new actions property and then inside that create as many actions as we like. And actions are just functions. And those functions can contain any business logic and asynchronous code like authentication requests. And then once that request is complete, it can commit a mutation to actually change the state. And actually actions can commit many mutations. They don't have to just commit one. So let's do a simple example before we start to work with Firebase Auth that uses set timeout instead just to simulate an asynchronous request. So then let's create this simple action. Now I'm going to call this action sign up. And in fact, we're going to be using this action later on to sign a new user up with Firebase authentication. But let's keep it simple to begin with. So actions can take in a couple of different arguments. The first one is a context object. And on that context object is going to be the commit method, which we use later on to commit a mutation once we've done the asynchronous code. And the second argument is going to be a payload again. And that can be any data we send in to the action. All right, then. So down here, we can just log something to the console to say, look, we're inside this action at the minute. So we know when it's been run. So I'm going to say sign up action right here. So when we see this in the console, we know that this function, this action has been run. All right, so let's now do our async code. Now, like I said, we're going to use set timeout to kind of simulate this asynchronous request to Firebase backend. But later on, we'll replace this with an actual request. So let's do set timeout. And uh, this is going to fire a function after a certain amount of time. And that amount of time is going to be 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. So that might be the time it takes to maybe send a request to a server and then that server send a response. OK, so that's how it kind of simulates that asynchronous code. It might take less, but hey ho, 2000 milliseconds is fine. All right, then. So inside here, once that time has passed, we want to commit a new mutation. In fact, this mutation right here. So we can say now context, which is the first argument we take in right here. And then on that, use the commit method to commit a mutation. And we want to commit the set user mutation and then pass in as the second argument some kind of payload. Now, in our case, that payload is going to represent a user object eventually. So we'll pass in an object. Now, the user object we get back from Firebase Auth later on is going to look very different with many different properties. But for now, we're just going to add in an email property and also a password property like so. Now, at the minute, we don't actually have a value for the email and password coming from anywhere. But don't forget, we pass in a payload. So we could pass in as a payload an object which has an email and password property. And that is going to come from the sign up form. So when a user signs up, they have to fill in this form, remember, right? They put in an email and a password and we keep hold of those values. And at the minute, we're just logging them to the console. But instead, what we could do is we could call the action or dispatch the action as it's known. And when we do that, we pass in that email value and password value into the payload. All right. So, for example, we could say the email is the payload dot email and we could say the password is the payload 
dot password, right? So they're coming from the payload. Now this is a little bit long winded. So I'm going to get rid of those. And instead, what we could do is we could just destructure email and password from the payload. So it would look something like this email and password. This is just simple destructuring. So we accept an object with an email and password value and we grab both of those values right here and then we just pass them into this object when we use the commit. OK, so let's save that for now. And now let's try using this in the sign up component. So then it's right here that we want to basically call the action or dispatch the action. But before we do this, we need to import that use store function because that's how we interact with the store. So let's do that first of all, import use store and that comes from Vuex. All right, so down here we can grab the store by saying const store is equal to use store like so. And then inside handle submit, we can use that store to dispatch an action. So the way we do this is by saying store and then a dispatch method. This is our way of basically saying, look, I want you to run one of the actions. So like we have commit for mutations, we have dispatch for actions. And then the first argument inside this function is the action that we want to dispatch. In our case, that was called sign up. If we take a look over here, it's called sign up, right? So we're dispatching that action. The second argument is the value of the payload. Now, in our case, remember, that's going to be the email and the password. So we're passing an object with the email and password like so. Now, the email property is the email dot value. So email dot value. Remember, these are refs and we need to say dot value to get the value of those. And the password property is password dot value like so. OK, so we're passing those in now and we're dispatching this action. All right then, so what we could do is try this out now in the browser. So I'm on the sign up component at the minute and I'm just gonna type in an email, mario at netninja.dev and then test one, two, three, four, five for the password. And when I click on sign up, what should happen is, first of all, we're gonna get a console log to say we're in the sign up action, then it's going to wait two seconds while we perform that set timeout. Remember, that's the thing that's kind of simulating the network request to Firebase. So it takes two seconds. Then it calls the commit to commit a mutation, which is the set user mutation that updates the user state. And it also logs out that message to say there's been a change of user. All right. So we should see that. So let's try it. Sign up. We see this log, wait two seconds, then we see user state changed, and now we can see this new state, which is a proxy object, and that's just how uh, view handles reactive values. So inside here, we can see the email and the password, all right? So that's worked. Now it's updated that state inside our store after two seconds. And this is generally the pattern that we're going to take when we're interacting with Firebase authentication, because it is going to take a little bit of time. So all of that logic to make the request is going to live inside the action that we create. And we're going to have the same kind of methodology for logging in and for logging out or anything else that is asynchronous. Okay.